Here's Wilson, and on the right side, but he Rebound loose, wild scramble in front, score! Hello, welcome, everyone, Caps fans around the globe in the Commonwealth of Virginia, State of Maryland, and the District of Columbia. Welcome to this playoff 2018 edition of the Power Play Point podcast. And we're ramping it up for this year's edition, this quest for the cup for our Washington Capitals. And uh, we're going to bring you uh, our preview when I say our I mean myself, along with my co-host. Her talents are known within, <laughs> not only within the Fairfax County public school system, but on two, count them, two podcasts in the Washington, D.C., Baltimore area. <laughs> she is the mermaid mentalist, the greatest lover of 43 liqueur you'll ever know, as well as being Tom Wilson's number one fan. <laughs> Listeners, I give to you the beautiful, wonderful, and talented Miss Anna Knox. Wow. I think I, I I think I need a drum roll. <laughs> I, can not, that in. I can throw yeah, that. I can throw that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay, it took for the playoffs to be like having a kickass intro, but I'm all for it. Well, it's like we were saying uh, just Damn. now, got to bring your A plus game and we're going to yeah, do it. Yeah, that's true. No pressure. <laughs> um okay, so before we go any further, I just want to apologize to our listeners, uh, you might be able to notice uh, my throat is uh, not in the best of shape, and my voice is uh, raspy like the Great Gatsby. So uh, want to apologize for that beforehand, but uh, it's not going to stop us from uh, bringing you what I feel is the most entertaining presentation of Caps Hockey as far as the fan perspective, and that's what we do here. Um Okay, so uh, Anna uh, did not have you uh, un- available, unfortunately, for uh, Chris and I's analysis. But uh, have you had a chance to listen to that? Do you have any anything you took away from that? <laughs> Crickets. <laughs> no. That busy. I, I, you know, I feel awful. I do. I feel awful that I haven't heard it. Well, you know, life gets all in the way. way. I, I get that. All the way through. All the way through. I heard the beginning of it, and I think you guys are just, you know, obviously know the sh- that you're talking about, which is awesome. But, yeah, things just like as soon as you, I put an earbud in or as soon as I try to listen to it during my lunch break, there would be some sort of crisis going on. So, Chris Levesque, Gail... I apologize. I haven't listened to it all the way through, but I'm sure it's awesome. No like you worries. don't need me to listen to it to know that it's awesome. Well, I mean, I I just wanted to I wanted to see what <clears throat> what you took away from it. But that's the great thing about a podcast is, <clears throat> pardon me, you can uh, listen to it whenever you like, whenever you got the time. So yeah, uh, yeah. this week has just been kind of hellish. Yeah, I I get that, and uh, yeah, for for me as well, and uh, you know. Basically, the reason reason uh, uh, my voice sounds like this was because uh, an unmentionable family member of mine tried to do something really stupid, and I had to uh, call them out on it. Boy, did I have to call them out on it. But uh, well, we won't go into that too much. But that's neither, and that's neither here nor there. So why why are we amping things up for this playoff edition? Well. I'll tell you why. When Monty Python posed the magical musical question, what is the meaning of life? Little did they know that one of their countrymen, Frederick Arthur, Lord Stanley of Preston, had already created the answer decades earlier. As Governor General of Canada, he authorized the creation of a hockey championship trophy that would soon become emblematic of the world's ice hockey championship. 
Nowadays, 16 teams have come forth from an 82-match march in the NHL. In this playoffs, four said trophy at stake is a premium silver and nickel alloy handcrafted trophy that stands nearly three feet tall and weighs 34 and a half pounds. And if you've got enough in you as a team to claw, fight, hit, skate, shoot, score, and do all of that better than all of your opponents, then guess what? You achieve hockey immortality. Why? Because you get your name on the thing forever. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what it's all about and why Damn. millions of fans across North America go crazy for this thing, ourselves included. True. How long have you been sitting on that monologue? <laughs> wow. I throw, right? I throw up a, a balloon and you just got to throw steel darts at it. I, well, yeah. I mean, come on. No, I'm impressed. Oh, but okay. Damn, like, how long were you sitting? I mean, not just that. I don't mean that in the caps, like, oh, oh I can't make, you know, and their, their history, but damn, Gil. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm a hockey history buff. So. Yeah. All right. The words, the words I just kind of threw together like a few minutes ago, but. No, you didn't. That feeling, that feeling has been in me since I first saw my first game. No, you've been, yeah, Some you've been sitting on that, ago. yeah, you've been sitting on that speech in like a dear diary moment and been like, one of these days I'm going to say this <laughs> and everyone's going to listen. It's all good. Good for you. <laughs> I get you all kinds of passionate. Hey, it's the cup. It what is the cup. It's good times. Yeah. So uh, when Anna and I last left you, uh, the Caps yes. were winding down the season uh, I yes. had uh, pretty, a few pretty good games, including a respectable loss against uh, this year's uh, Grandma's Ashtray. Whoops, uh, President's Trophy winners, uh, the Nashville Pres- Predators. Uh, uh, Nashville. And, and the... Uh, Nashville. That's what I said, Nashville. You said National. I said Nashville. <sighs> okay. Someone else is fired up, I see. <laughs> Continue. Um, okay, so uh, go I ahead. Heard a, is that a is that a drink? It's yes, not a good drink because you're sick. No, not a good drink. Um, not any drink I should be having, but it's it's a uh, it's a uh, lime coke lime flavored Coca Cola. Oh, you? Yeah, like okay. You don't like so well, you don't like lime anything, so. No, no, I do. I do. Oh, really? But I'm just going gonna, I'm just gonna to say, when it comes to colas, sodas, there doesn't need to be any added flavors. Like, I don't need a cherry Coke barf. I don't need, <laughs> you know, uh, lime. Yeah, that. I mean, the only thing that I, I thought I could tolerate was when they added lemon. Cause I put lemon in everything, but the, it just, it was, it wasn't good. So, ew, but okay. Well, I, I felt like, uh, I felt like, uh, freestyling it, uh, you know, so no, I'm fully clothed. I'm fully clothed. The cup. I'm. Are you though? Yes, I am. No. What I meant by that is the machine, the drink machine where you go up to, uh, why am I even bothering? But uh, yeah, the 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 um, shoot, where was I? Uh, oh, right, the last game. <laughs> uh, okay, so the final game was against uh, what uh, some thought would be a potential opponent, uh, the New Jersey Devils. Mm-hmm. Pardon me. Um, so uh, that that was a, a great way I thought to end end the season. I thought everybody was uh, firing on all cylinders as as that uh, as it goes. And Ovechkin himself got two goals uh, to inch ever so close to that elusive, what was it, eighth 50-goal uh, season, seventh 50-goal mm-hmm. season. Right, um, seventh, yeah. And as Mr. Robbie Gross described himself ever, ever so eloquently on the Sports on the Hill podcast this past Monday, 
he tried to get the hat <laughs> trick. And uh, emphasis on tried. Boy, did he try. My God. Uh, so many shot attempts and actual shots directed at the net and on the net. Uh, in the last three minutes, he pretty much exhausted himself and his teammates were doing all they can to set him up for that 50th, but he couldn't quite get there. Uh, but it, it was a thing of beauty to see. And I said, I said on our last show together, if he goes in on a hot streak, that's a beautiful thing to see. And it's a great sign for, Absolutely. for uh, the, the upcoming playoffs. Well, I, I mean, he started off that game determined... I mean, he was, that was it. Like, you could see it in his eyes. He was ready to go, and he wanted to get that 50. But what I absolutely love about him as a as a Caps player, as a Caps captain, as just an athlete in general, is that when he's being asked and everyone wants to be like, oh, you almost got the 50, oh, you almost did, and his response is, yeah, I tried and I didn't, and you know, whatever. Like it's it's it happens, and I think I absolutely love the fact that he downplays it. So therefore, the fans need to downplay it and move it on. And it's just not worthy of having a bunch of conversations of you know shoulda coulda would have. Like I really hope this guy does something. Everybody pulled for him. It didn't happen, but it's not like he was going into it like, oh, you know, he's got 27 goals. We're hoping for 50. He missed it by one. And yes, as a, as an athlete, yes, missing it by one does suck. However, he gave it 100%, and if not more. And I respect the guy regardless. You know, all he cares about now is getting – the caps to the cup and and doing their sh so whatever he didn't get it but i'm not worried about it it's not from lack of effort no certainly not and that yeah. that that's the key point is the effort <clears throat> part yeah uh, and the attitude that he shows on the ice that kind of thing spreads throughout a locker room so that that's what i meant when i said I would like for him to end the season on a high and go into the playoffs with that. So that hopefully will carry over and spread throughout the team uh, because I think that that's going to carry them a lot further than people think. I agree. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like this year's different. I can't explain it, but uh, Ovechkin does seem to be a lot hungrier. Not that he wasn't before, but he, he's he's showing it. He's feeling it. Yeah, for for darn sure. Absolutely. Uh, okay. So, but you mentioned you mentioned fan reaction and uh, shoulda woulda couldas. I'm glad you mentioned that too because I got something else I want to get off my chest, and that's this whole. I wasn't even going to address this. Uh, Chris and I, when uh, on on the last recording, the last podcast episode, uh, discussed the goalie situation. I thought that would pretty much be it. Well. As it turns out, and it, we couldn't save ourselves, uh, we being uh, the Facebook rooms that I frequent, uh, the True Caps fans, and of course our own room, and everywhere else for that matter, uh, could not spare ourselves from this all of a sudden rampant speculation that, oh great, now we've got a cheaper option in goal, we can rely on Grubauer, he's going to be the savior, and he's, well yeah, he's all of that, don't get me wrong, but... Now the latest talk is, oh, guess what? Ah, now we can trade Holpe. We can dump his contract yeah. and get rid of him and get some prospects. And yeah, you people are talking out of the side of your orifices. Come on. Yeah. Uh, let's concentrate on the now. Let's not lose our sight on the, of the puck, people. Come on. You people that want to worry about stuff like that, trading him, why are you looking to the offseason when you've got a playoffs in front of you right now? Okay? Exactly. I mean, that's the that's the kind of shit that just drives me absolutely crazy. Because you have people in the beginning of the season that are on this Holtby high and whatever, 
And rightfully so. The guy kicked ass last couple of years. He's been awesome. And he still is awesome. But the whole point is you have positions in any sport in which somebody is going to come up who's going to be as good as you or better. And that's what happens. You have a backup quarterback. You have have how many pitchers on, you know, waiting to be called up. Give me a break. Hope he's kicking ass. Let him do his thing. He needs, for him, it is 100% mental. So he needs to just get into doing what Holpe does best, you know, not listening to the, you know, the crowds, the social media, all that kind of shitty hockey, which I don't think he listens to anyways. And give group our chance. He's not an enemy. That's what kills me is that people are like, oh, you know, oh, group is going to play first game. Like, that's awful. Is it? Look at his statistics. You know, the guys kicked ass. Give them some credit. Don't put all the pressure on going into the playoffs into Braden Holpe. He is one person on the team. You need to acknowledge all of the other players that need to be doing their job, whether it's scoring, defending, whatever it is, all of the above. So that's the kind of shitty hockey that I can't stand is that, you know, you know, it's. Oh, we're putting Groovy in, so get rid of Trots. Oh, we're putting, you know, Holpe in, get rid of Trots. Shut up, people. Just, uh, that's the kind of shit that I'm done with. I'm so done with those kind of fans. Support your team, support your coaches, and just go with it. Quit being the coach from the couch and putting your perspective out there when it's not necessary. And you're not truly a fan if you don't support your team. So there's my soft. That's okay. my soft box. And that, no, and I, I sorry. totally agree. No, no, don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. I, I Rule number one, you and I, you are never, you are never ever to censor yourself or, or stifle <laughs> your right. opinion on this show ever. Thank uh, you. But... Uh, no, I, I have to agree with now is not the time to be all negative. Whatever happens to this team to see the bad. It's time to see the good in the team. Braden mm-hmm. Holpe has gone out there and supported this decision and he will continue to support the team. Even if it's from the bench and you know where else he's going to support the team on the practice surface. Yes, because he will provide himself an opportunity to work himself back into the game if he has to, but also be a good teammate by being challenging to his teammates and giving them a hard target to shoot at and forcing them to work harder as the backup goalie. That's what they do. Absolutely. I mean, he's been, you consider how long a hockey season is and you're not going to, obviously how the sport is, you're not going to have the same goalie for every game they have mutual respect for each other they depend on each other they rely on each other so let it go quit throwing trots under the bus for saying that that grubauer deserves it's not he deserves he earned it he's going to whatever however you have to phrase it he is going to play the first game we as Caps fans need to support it. There's there's no excuse. There's no reason not to. So people who are just all pro Holby, that's not okay. You don't need to be pro anybody. It is a team. So you're pro Caps or nothing. That's how I see it. This is a time we all need to come together and, yeah. and support the team. The, so, yeah. the allegiance so people... should be to anyone wearing the red, white, and blue, not just to one the Capitals. Player. Exactly. And not just the veteran <clears throat> players. You, you know, you pick up the number 63s and the 13s and, you know, you, you get the companies and the Jarabex. They are a team. So quit, you know, people bitching and moaning about this and trades. It's not the time. It's not the place. So shut it. And give your opinion, I don't know, 
when somebody asks. <laughs> okay, so I. A, sorry. <laughs> it, 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 hey, hey, sorry. let it all Edit. let it all hang out. That's fine. Most by people me. piss me off. I I get that. I totally get that. And I, I was I was kind of pissed when I I started reading all that crap because it's like why 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 bring that crap up why right. talk about off season crap when you've got two months of a playoff run right in front of you. Exactly. You know, I just, I, I cannot believe we've had people that purportedly call themselves knowledgeable hockey fans. They can't see what the hell's in front of them. Well, it's like, they always just want to see the worst to say, Oh, and this is why. And I called it and I did this. I would much rather be a commentator a podcast host, a fan of whatever you want to call it and say, oh my God, hell yeah. I knew it was going to happen. It was their year and look what happened. Why be the complete, you know, asshole in the situation? Always looking for the worst situation. Always wanting to talk about the drama. No, Mm -mm. you're not a sports fan if you're looking for drama. Yeah, it happens. It's in every <laughs> sport. But for this situation, knock it off. It, just stop. So, uh, ugh, done. No, wait, you, right. No, no. It's, it's, it's time to kill that. Time to kill yeah. that, that part of it. So, yeah. We're, like Anna said, we're done. I, I know we're going to hear it still, but that's not what is to be focused upon what is to be focused upon is love for our side and hatred for the opposition which in this round number one is the columbus blue jackets and okay. i'm well let me let let me just say just one thing sure and then i will not interrupt you because it's so obnoxious I'm, and i apologize caps fans are caps fans and if you're not you're a fan of mike Milbury. So <laughs> that's how I see things. Like you're either with us or you're a Mike Milbury fan, regardless of the team that we're playing. So I'm hoping everyone listening and acknowledging this podcast and, and the team in general is all a hundred percent caps and not loving the Mike Milbury train. That's it. There you heard it. Sorry. No, no, no need to be. Um, okay, so as I was saying, the, this year's first round opponent is the Columbus Blue Jackets. Blue Jackets. We don't have, and this is why I'm kind of you know, feeling a little bit different about this year, but we do not have a playoff history with them at all. Um, they don't have much of one to speak with. Uh, it would be a good thing, though. They've never won a playoff series. They won two in their series, two games against the Pittsburgh Penguins in their first round series last year. Um, but they themselves have a t as a team has never, they've never won a series. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. Chris and I, if you heard the show, we predicted a six game series, each of us, and it's going to be tough. But I think in the end, I think the Washington Capitals will turn the entire Columbus Blue Jackets team into one big bottle of liquid plumber. Why? Because they're blue and they're going to go down the toilet in a hurry. How long have you been sitting on that one? Or is that just something that came to you to like? You're going to shoot show? holes in everything I say. I do. <sighs> yes, I do. You wouldn't, be, now. you wouldn't be you if you weren't. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I agree with you. Uh, I think they're going to go for two. And I think that we are going to have a loss one or two games. Uh, which is fine because you know what? That just adds fuel to the fire and that's all good. Um, I, I, I don't know. Like I, I'm all on board. I'm all on board with the series. I really am. I'm glad it's not. Uh, do I say <laughs> I'm glad it's not Pittsburgh? I'm just glad it's somebody else. How about we just say that? And I think that's what needs to change for the Caps. So we've got this, you know, dark cloud over us whenever it comes to the to the Penguins and they're looking for their three peat and all this other kind of Oh no! 
whatever. This team, however, I think is a good matchup for us. I think it's going to say a lot about our players, our goaltenders, everything else, and, you know, and our fans, to be totally honest. Yeah, I, you know, I, I like definitely think you, so. You have to be, like, you know, we've been watching for 80-something games now. Why not be 100% behind the team? Don't second-guess it. Don't have doubts. Don't do anything. Go into it like you're rocking the red for the 60 minutes. And that's all that matters. Just go. And I love and I yeah. And I love the fact that it's at home for the first two games. Sometimes that's just what we need. And the fans just need to go with it and shut the Finland up about the the goaltending. We have two amazing goaltenders. That's it. That's all that matters. And so, so it, it applies from life experience. It applies there too, because I think this one, I'm serious. It, this, this one is a reminder of, you know, when you sometimes, some days you, you're not quite feeling it when you're going to work, you don't want to be there. You know, everybody listening knows what the hell I'm talking about. You don't want to yeah. be there. You'd rather be somewhere else. You'd rather be home in bed and you don't know how you're going to get through the day. And then you get through you know, your first test and your first test might not be your typical one, but you get through it. You know, your first critical situation, you get through it. You don't know how, but you get through it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what this series is going to be about. Just getting through it. It doesn't yeah. have to look pretty. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. They don't have to win every game six to one. You know, they just got to win four out of the next seven games. That's all they have to do. Yeah. And the, the best thing of all, the pressure's not on them because ain't nobody expecting anything out of them. Exactly. So Good. that's 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 one thing that's different this year. Nice job, Gil. I try. You know, you do. And we talked last week that you're that you're cheap and you <laughs> you try and it's all good. Um but it's true though. Like and I hundred percent agree, like it pressures off because there are some, you know, jerk off fans out there that just are like, ah, who cares? I'm not going to make it anyways. But you know what? Those of us who care, those of us are going to rally. We're going to watch every game. We're going to, you know, sit through win losses, whatever. And we're still fans regardless. Rock in the red a hundred percent. And I don't even want to hear any negativity because I'm, I'm like, I'm done. Like when it comes to the playoffs, you know, that's it. It's 110% from the team, 110% from the fans. Right. So for me, as long as they approach every game, like it's their last and they do everything they can to win it. Now, sometimes they're going to come up short because the other team happens to be better for that one night. That's fine. But that, that's all I'm looking for is their best effort through however many games the series is going to go. That's all I'm looking I agree. for. Yeah. Um, now, I really, I, but I really want, I mean, obviously I want the Capitals to win, obviously. But what I really, really want is for... Oh, wait. That sounded like a song. No, 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 no. Please, please. I'm a child of the 80s, not the 90s. It's not like you there's don't know no, what I'm talking there's, about. I do know what you're talking about. And let me tell you, there's, Please. No, there's no way. The Spice Girls. There's no <laughs> way. Okay. Ever. End of discussion. All right. So tell me what you want, what you really, really want. <sighs> Go. <laughs> well, I had you're, to. You're that a, was so. You're a girl and you're full of spice. That. That's about where it ends. True. Oh, boy. Well, what I'd love to have happen is yes. for the Caps to beat this team so badly, so badly, that it embarrasses their coach, John Tortorella, who I think is extremely bad for this game. He's just a douche. Ah, douche doesn't even begin to cover it. Yeah. 
and the bag that he came in, too. <laughs> no, that, that doesn't even start it for me. This guy is one of the biggest jerks the game has ever known, and that list includes Sean Avery. I put him in that company. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's how that's how awful and rotten and rotten I think he is. All right. But I want I want them to be blown out of the building so badly in this series that not only does he get fired, and I think he'll be fired if they lose this series. I okay. really do because they're not going any further with him. Um, but I. I want that to happen because not only will he be fired, I think, but he'll be hung out to dry so badly that no team, no organization even, will look to hire him as a head coach ever again. And that can only be good for hockey. There you go. He embarrassed the United States of America when he was their head coach. They had nothing. There's a team loaded with talent and stars. They went nowhere in the Olympics the year he coached them. Yes, he's won one Stanley Cup, but that was a while ago. In fact, it was 14 years ago, and he hasn't even he hasn't even had a sniff of the final since. So everybody thinks he's this great coach. Yeah, he he pushes players to their limit. That's what he does. But there's other ways of doing that without having to be a jerk. And Anna and I ought to know because she's a teacher yep. and I've spent time teaching and coaching in our own way. There's ways to get people to put out their maximum effort without your having to be a complete asshole about it. Exactly. And that's what he is. Yeah, and, I totally agree with you 100%. I can't stand him. So, absolutely, I support everything you just said, which and, is rare. And, and and listen, there was that one year, I think it was like seven or eight years ago, there was that incident where a Caps fan behind the bench, he was coaching the Rangers at the time, I believe, uh, threw water on him. Well, I, I'm an Aquarius, I'm a water bearer, I like that idea, but fans do not resort to anything like that in this series. We are better than that. We are classier than that, and we need to show that. Okay? You are representing your team. You are representing the capital city of the United States of America. Please, nobody resort to that kind of crap, because we are all better than that, and we need to show it. Mm -hmm. But I, yeah, I mean, I, that's my selfish wish, is to, I mean, completely and utterly outplay and blow them out of the water so that, we can show the hockey world, hey, this is a this is a, this Caps team that nobody thought would go very far. Look what they've done to this master tactician in the first round. And then I will gladly roll out the hashtag bye bye torts. B Y E B Y E T O R T S when it happens. Because I do believe that'll be the last time he ever coaches an NHL game. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't that be a delight? Hell yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, yeah, he's, it's just one of those names that you see it and you're like, oh, done, done, put it to rest. Caps go out there and do your thing, you know, and I'd rather, wouldn't you rather have a coach on your team that supports the players that is able to talk about the players in a positive manner and isn't an absolute douchebag on the you know when it comes to calls he's, i feel he's like an embarrassment Trotz, it, he absolutely is he looks like a <laughs> hothead and barry trust comes out there when there is something that he absolutely feels like no you know, this is a wrong call. This is it. He's going to say to me, he gets heated. And that makes you feel like, yeah, a coach who's supporting his team. He's supporting the players. God, on the other end, I just feel like the guy's just like, you know, like he's going to, I don't, 
I don't even know. Like, he just looks like a cartoon character, and I feel like he's going to have, like, a volcano explosion out of his head because he's such a hothead. You know, it's just ridiculous. And oh, no! calls, and it's like, come on now. Done. We're done with you, and whatever. So hopefully going into the series, you know, we will show the class that we usually do and go from there. Yep, I think so. Now, uh, okay, so we're uh, getting close to time here. Just wanted to cover one last thing. Now, um, okay, spoiler alert for you. Unfortunately, you said uh, you did not have the chance to listen to uh, the whole show, the last show. So, uh, but uh, going to provide a bit of a spoiler alert. Uh, when I asked Christian about um, what some of the keys were, to this series, at least, in the playoffs in general, what he said was uh, that he was looking for Evgeny Kuznetsov as the X Factor. I think I have an idea what you're going to say, but is there a player you feel uh, (laughs) is going to be a difference maker? Oh, Gil. My boy, Tommy. Number 43 is going to step it up this series and kick ass. Is 92 going to also bring it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Backstrom, Kuzi, Wilson. Those are your three. That's your trifecta right there. No doubt about it. And, but I also have to say that I am all about the new players too. I'm all about not only oh, Kempney. I don't mean as like a new player, but new to the cap Kempney. You have, you know, Jarevac or not. No, I actually, I do. I do like Jarevac. And then my number 63, I think they're going to rock it. I really do. So yes, I'm going back to your question. 43. That's my, that's my go-to star of the week. Star so, of the playoffs. So from basically from that lineup that you just said, what yes. I take away from that is that we have the right combination of speed, skill, and a tough game. Yes. And you need all of that come playoff time. So 100%. I would agree with you there. Oh, what? I, I think I think. Wait. If, Repeat that. I said I would agree with you there. One more time. I said I would agree with you there. Okay. Just checking. Do you, you <laughs> want to check yourself and see if you made a miss? No. <laughs> I just want to be sure that we're okay. That you're not going to edit that part out. No, 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 no. Okay. Nothing of the sort. Okay. Um, now I feel I feel like our like regardless of who the lineup is at this or you know it's our team is strong. We have had injuries to vet players. We've had injuries. Um, you know, it happens. That's the you know how hockey goes, how any sport goes. It's who can step up, take you know take over do exactly what's needed to be done and, you know, rock it. And I feel like our team is so ready. So is Kuzi going to be amazing? Yes. But I feel like my boy Tommy is going to rock it this season. I am so excited for him. He's done so well this year. I want him to keep it up. I want him out of the sin bin. I want him, like you said, all year. And I have to agree with you. And I'll repeat that. I have to agree with you. I want him in front. Of, I I want him in front of the pipes. I want him just being there. I mean, he's he's a huge force. He knows exactly what he needs to do. I, and I want him. I want him to park God. his butt in front of Sergei Bobrovsky so often, right. so often that when he farts, Bobrovsky will know exactly what spices he had in his tacos. Damn. That's gross, but okay. Yeah. Yeah. What you want? Yeah, and oh my god. Oh my 
my god, I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Please edit that. <laughs> Finland! Me, Paisanos. <laughs> me. Oh, I don't oh, remember. I do not remember too. the playoffs being this this much fun. But I mean, if this seriously though, if this attitude, <laughs> if this attitude spreads like wildfire amongst our fan base and down to the team, <sighs> then it will be one hell of a ride. Uh, yeah, well. folks. I mean, the reason we do this, okay? It has been said. And I'll repeat it. Fans show up to watch the games. Fanatics help win the games. Let us be, in all caps, caps fanatics. Ladies and gentlemen, 100%. that's all I ask of you. And so with that, I think this is a good time to wrap it up. Um. I'm going to ask uh, Anna, uh, did you have anything <laughs> else you wanted to put out there? No. Fair I'm enough. Good. Okay. So, with that, hoping for a great and grand round one, or at least a game one, tomorrow evening. I uh, hope uh, some of you are watching. Uh, we have round one games going on, including the Battle of Pennsylvania. Let's hope those two clobber the mm-hmm. you-know-what out of each other. Right. Uh, but tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock puck drop, Capital One Arena. If you can't be there, be there in spirit, watching on the big screen, or wherever you are. Please be a fanatic, in all caps. For Anna Knox, this is the Blue Liner on Point, signing off and reminding you that if you want to make yourself a good set of thinly sliced cabbage, be sure to follow Cole's Law. Let's go Caps. Go Caps. This has been another episode of the Power Play Point Podcast. All episodes are available from Apple Podcasts, the Podbean app, blueliner77.podbean.com, and now available from Stitcher. Music by Joe McAllister, voiceover by Jeffrey Conkle. 